if you piss in the house, I'm going to kill you. And there I did not mute. <laughs> I forgot to mute. For, any, for anybody listening, she was talking to me. I was about to piss in my bedroom. Josh has lifted his leg. Hey, get in here. Dallas is about to start. Welcome to the Ewing Barbecue, where we always suggest checking your blind spots while driving. My name is Mary. Yes. And I'm Sarah. And in the hazy Northeast, I am Josh, um, kind of breathing in Canadian forest fires, so we should all be careful. <laughs> Uh, a quick shout out. Thank you to our Patreon members, Brendan Fillick, Captain America, Sheen Pye, Marie Johnson, Michael Jung, Laura Francis, Jason Gregory, Jason Carter, Laura Bernheim, Brad Mahollin, Anita Wren, and Kristen Carlano. Thanks, guys. As always, you're super Ooh. rad. Yay. Yay. Thank you. We got, we got things going on. Uh, Next mm-hmm. next Summer. Tuesday is the big mm-hmm. Dallas reunion out in Palm Springs at Oscars. Mm-hmm. Steve Canale, Patrick Duffy, Linda Gray, Charlene Tilton, Cherie J. Wilson, Kathy Podwell, Audrey Landers, uh, ba, 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 Joan Van Ark, and I hear Michael Priest might show up as well. And cool. um, according to Steve, Entertainment Tonight and People Magazine are going to be on site. At the event. Oh, cool. And I oh, good. might have some people getting us some greetings. Work awesome. I hope so. Yay. And we have the Hollywood show at the end of the month in uh, Burbank. And we have some Dallas people there. Barbara Carrera, Angelica Nero herself, Ooh. is going to be reunited with George Chakiris, who played Nicholas. Nicholas. Barbara Luna, who played Barbara Eden's sister in law in an episode of the last season, is going to be there. I forgot about her. Yeah, a lot of people do. <laughs> um, De- Deborah Nard- Nard will be there with uh, Joan Van Ark. And uh, Donna Mills is also going to be there, uh, being an Ewing. By default on Knott's Landing there. And speaking of Deb Renard, Deb Renard had a performance that is supposed to take place June 8th. That's tomorrow with Peter Noon and Herman's Hermit. She was supposed to be performing with Al Sapienza in Holmdel, New Jersey. And that has been postponed because of the air quality. They are asking people in the new tri-state area to stay inside because of the Canadian forest fires, which are blowing smoke and haze all down through the Northeast. And I'll be down there on Friday, so that should be interesting. Let's see. Birthdays. Birthdays. Uh, Alexis Smith, Lady Jessica Montford, June 8th. She was born 1921. She would be 102. (laughs) And the anniversary of her death date, was June 9th, 1993. So she made it through her birthday, at least, that year. And Andrew Stevens, who played Casey Denault, is June 10th, born 1955, so he is almost 70, 68. And Jamie Ewing herself, Jenna Lee Harrison, the spoiler, 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 the only person to die twice on Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Uh June 12th, 1958, she will be 65. And Joan Van Ark, June 13th, born ne- she will be 80. That's ridiculous. Joan Van Ark will? She will be celebrating her 80th birthday at Oscars in Palm Springs next Tuesday. I mean, what? my mom is 70, but like, I always thought she was like younger than my mom when she was on the show. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. She looks really good. Yeah, that's crazy. I have her listed twice, June 13th and June 16th. So I'm just going to check that while you go on with other things. All right. Um, So tonight we're talking about season six, episode seven, 110 of the series, Hit and Run. I hope I'm ready for this. Make no mistake, one of these days... You're going to have to butt heads with JR. Can you handle the whole cartel? Or even me with Rebecca nipping at your heels? I can beat you despite Rebecca. 
that lightweight son of hers and the cartel. I hope you haven't let him talk you into giving back any of that divorce settlement. You may be needing that money soon. JR and Bobby are not going to roll over and play dead just because you want revenge. This thing could destroy all of us. It was written by Howard Lakin, directed by friend of the podcast, Michael Priest. Aired November 12th, 1982. June 16th. June yes. 16th? Cool. Okay. Um, the number one song in the U.S. on November 12th, 1982 was Up Where We Belong by Joe Cocker. And Jennifer Warren. Up and Where We Belong. Sorry. I Don't Want to Dance by Eddie Grant in the U.K. The number one film in the U.S. was a personal favorite of mine, Creep Show. Ooh. And the top news stories this week in 1982, the U.S. performs nuclear a nuclear test at the Nevada test site, and KGB chief Yuri Andropov succeeds Leonovid Leonovid Yuri Andro- and- Andropov. <laughs> <laughs> Yuri and drop off. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm I'm bad at these. Yuri, Russian Yuri and drop off the cliff and fall on your face. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, he succeeded uh, Brezhnev. Anyway, as leader of the Soviet Union, as hard as that was for me to get <laughs> out. <laughs> um, born this day was Anne Hathaway. Oh, and Kelly Kruger, who was a uh, best known for being a soap opera actress. No relation to Freddy Kruger. The character. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Yeah. And on Dallas. And on Dallas, this episode fell to number four for the week. No. From three. So it fell <laughs> one more slot. But this this is the best season, though. I think it's a good season, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas Hammond, who played somebody here. Played Bill Johnson. Uh, Bill Johnson, yes. Okay. Uh, he played Frederick von Trapp in the 1965 music movie classic Sound of Music and went on to play the lead role in the TV version of the comic book series The Amazing Spider-Man. He, that's not all the only connection to The Sound of Music because Larry Hagman's mother, Mary Martin, originated the role in the 1959 Broadway production of the musical. Also... Scenes for episode 303 were filmed at the same Salzburg home as seen in the movie. And before he was Dan Fielding in Night Court of New York City, Dan Fielding Fielding. had an alias, Mr. Colton, John Larroquette. I love him. Joined as a temporary guest star on Dallas in this particular episode. So let's, mm-hmm. and he is back playing Dan Fielding in 2023 on the New Night Court. Have y'all watched that? I did. I haven't. I, I, I haven't, haven't yet. yet. Should I watch it or no? I did. It's it, it's it's okay. It's it, I, I like you, it, to judge it, from from Melissa. Oh Rush. my god! Yes, god, I can't think of her name. Yeah, I like her, but I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, if you like John Larroquette, I would I would watch because he's he's yeah. very good. And the, I do like him. And in the uh, season finale, because they did get renewed for a second season, Marsha Warfield turned up again as Roz. Ooh. Ooh. She, went, she went before the judge, who is now Dan Fielding. Hmm? Dan Fielding's not the judge? He, his character got a judgeship down in Louisiana. Wow. So he left the night court and went to Louisiana. Oh. Mar- and Marsha Warfield will be back in the next season uh, for a little bit more, too, as well. So. Huh. Hmm. Crazy. Yes. That's all, right. that's, that's all we got there. A couple other things. There's some goofs this episode. So when there's a little bit of a continuity error, when Cliff, Rebecca, and Afton are checking out Cliff's new office, Cliff's tie is crooked, but during their conversation, it's straightened. It's a motorized tie. It actually moves. Yeah. There's a little <laughs> yeah, motor yeah. in it. And it, it. he also has the bow tie version, which spins, if you've ever seen the spinning bow tie. And there is a character, a, a, a character makes a big error this episode. I don't know if you caught it. As the oil cartel are leaving the Cattleman's restaurant, they pass JR, who refers to Andy Bradley as Wade. 
Wade Luce recently sold his company to Cliff Barnes and was no longer involved in the oil cartel. And he moved to Arizona to be near his sick daughter. Can I just say right out of the gate, who was responsible for the music in this episode? It is intense. It is the music is so intense. Da, 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 da. Like, is there a shark about? Like, what's happening? I expected Jaws to come out of the South Fork pool. <laughs> it's it's in, so intense. Land shark, land shark. Mm. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and that's not the only. That's not the only scene that was had in, intense music. And- no. Yeah, it was so intense. And it, it, it starts with uh, JR driving away from South Fork and then into a parking lot where he meets McSween. His right hand man, McSween. McSween. Yeah. They're McSween. going they're it's, going over the plan. Whatever the plan yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, the plan. They're trying to look for pattern. Um and, and they don't say for who in this scene, but you know. We have some ideas. We have our suspicions, our inkling suspicions. Mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. Uh, and the dog agrees. I, I'm going to kill the dog, by, by the way, because he's barking at Reba because he wants sex or something. I'm not sure what's going on here. It's the wiener dog. Ever, he got groomed today. I told Mary this while ago. Well, and apparently had... Winston thinks he, she's sexy now. Look, look, he's just laying beside her going, how how can she won't move? Well, he's a wiener dog. He's probably getting... It's creeping me out. He's probably getting... That's your sister, you nasty fucker. Okay, continue. <laughs> Sorry. Well, they are down south, but they're not in the right state. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first appearance of the gold building. Yes. Which we will see a lot of from now on. And did you know it, it had been in the opening credits as they panned right. around the city, but... They didn't know at the time that that was going to become a very integral part of the That's series. Very important. very important. Yep, yep. And the gold building is Cliff's brand new office at Barnes Wentworth Oil. That's right. We find out that Rebecca, which we already probably assumed this, but she's flat out telling Cliff that she bought this particular company so that Cliff would have more power because he is now in the cartel. She wants – now, the, the, the woman – she she flip flops like a waffle here because yeah. she her son had tried to commit suicide because of fighting Jr. Now she wants him to fight Jr. Right? She's like, I'm doing this whole thing so you have the power to fight Jr. And the man that led him to his suicide attempt. Right. After to Rebecca is like, hey, just remember, like Cliff is just learning the ropes he's going to be getting used to being the head of this oil company and like learning how to do oil business business, business. Um, <laughs> so maybe just like give him some time to adjust and rebecca is just like mm, yeah i give him a little bit of time but mm, if he's gonna fight jr he needs to be prepared i'm like mm. I feel like this is not the hill to die on, Rebecca. It's not going to go the way you want it to go, woman. Mm -mm. A lot of people could get hurt. There's a yeah. That's what. But I feel like Pam keeps saying that. Pam is (laughs) like literally. Pam Pam could be turning into the uh, clairvoyant Afton at this point. Yeah. Right. You guys, stop. Someone's going to get hurt. Yep. Okay. So let me cut to the meeting where they are officially splitting Ewing Oil between Jr. and Bobby. Very. Standard boilerplate business, business. Very much so. Um, and then they're going to, they, they, they split it as fairly as they can. Everyone seems happy with that, but they had to share the refinery. Right. What is it? 25,000 barrels or something? Yeah. Something like that. I did not write that down. Something like that. Yeah. Yep. All I can do is stare at Punk's bolo tie this whole the, scene. The, the turquoise gem on it. Yeah. Oh, it is amazing it's i'm gonna post it on our instagram it remi- because is it, does it come I, from like a, a like a southwestern native american that's what it reminds me of a very southwestern to. native american style of yeah. turquoise and gems and it's ridiculous and beautiful and all the things and then when he stands up we realize that it has a matching belt buckle Punk has some style. He's a walking advertisement for the turquoise Native American artwork. Yeah. They all file out of the room, and then Harv gives, holds Punk back and gives him 
a sealed letter that is to be opened after the final audit in a year. In one year from today. Whoa. Do we know what's in it? I don't think so. We don't. We don't. And uh, Punk is like, what could this be? And nobody knows. But now we have that to look forward to. Right. I'm I'm very curious myself. I, I don't know what could be in that, but it... What could it be? Hmm. <laughs> and then we cut to uh, Frank Crutcher calling Ellie at South Fork for a lunch date. He's a used car salesman. He... He, I'm not going to take no for an answer. Uh, okay, yeah. It's creepy. It's creepy. I don't like this scene because she's like, no, thank you, but no. And then he's literally like, I'm not going to take no for an answer. So you're going to go out with me tomorrow at one at the Louvre restaurant. And she's like, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm going then. He's like, yes, of course you are. And I'm like, well, I don't like that, Frank. Okay, but, okay, but don't, don't cost me my drink. But I think Ellie is into it a little bit because then she hangs up and she kind of does a little giggle to herself like she's in the eighth grade. So I think maybe Ellie does like that. Hmm. Probably. She likes likes to be told what to do sometimes. (laughs) Oh. Oh. She's like, hello. She's a little role play in action there. (laughs) I mean... Then we cut Ray catches Mickey playing craps with the ranch hands and then and like is so pissed and angrily breaks it up. Mickey is full of craps. I mean, so is Ray. <laughs> right. It it runs in the kinfolk. The, I think so. the blood the blood kin. Blood kin. And then Ray Ray throws the dice himself and rolls old snake eyes after Mickey leaves too. I actually didn't know. I knew that it was a thing. I was like, ooh, crap, snake eyes. I know this is a thing, and but I have never played crap, so I didn't know. And I, that means that you have crapped out. You have lost. I did, I did not know that either. I've heard it before, like you said. Because right. I, I, was, I was like, snake eyes, and I was like, wait, is 2-1 snake eyes? I think it is. And so I just Googled to be sure because I didn't really know. Is that a little I only know from TV. Is that a little foreshadowing? Dun, dun, dun. We'll see. He also he accuses Mickey of cheating, too. Like he and then Mickey's like, I don't need to cheat against these yokels. Like, give me more. You know. Sounds like he's talking about like Cletus and the uh, slack jawed yokels from. Uh, yeah, he seems to think that everybody is below him, but I think that's well. At, at least we're not bored bit. like Donna is now that her book is done. Yeah. She's so bored. And the, the very interesting choice of music there with a touch of the Dallas theme as she pulls up. Again, more in, odd uh, choices for the music in this episode. Yeah. And it almost sounded like yeah. a cart, like a, a caper almost. With the <laughs> yeah. And so since Donna is there, Ellie tells her about Frank calling and inviting her to lunch. And she says that she wishes she'd said no now because she's really uncomfortable going out with anyone else but Jock. But Donna reminds her that she's a catch. And it would be a little awkward to go out with Jock at this point because he's I mean, decomposing. Right. That would probably not be great. Just, no, yeah. No. But she's like, you're a young, wealthy widow. Like, expect the dudes to start flocking around. Yeah. Especially, you you might even get some young ones looking for a snow leopard. (laughs) Uh, leopard. What is a snow leopard? It's beyond beyond, Beyond beyond a a cougar. (laughs) <laughs> a snow leopard. Though I that's still what, that's that what I'm going to be. Ellie is only in her fifties. Let's remind right. ourselves that she. Really? Is only I, in her 50s I thought. I, I thought about this the other day. She was not much older than Larry Hagman. No. And people always. That's so weird to me. People always complain about age differences, and people shouldn't be playing this role if they're this. But you know what? It is called acting. You're playing a character. Yeah, I know. I agree with that. But You're I just, playing a character. I kinda, it's like, I agree with that, but I feel like it characterized her forever after this because I thought of her as a grandmother. Right. Right. And that's what women, if once they're past like 
35. 35? <laughs> then they're like older. Then they're like oh, grandmas. It's like Gabriel like, Carteris playing Andrea Zuckerman on Beverly Hills 9210 when she was in her 30s literally... and the character was supposed to. But you know something? She lied about her age. In, yeah. When you do a musical or something or a play in high school, you're all in mm-hmm. the same age group, but you're playing people of different ages. It's acting. Well, yeah, that's different, though. No, it, it's, yeah, it's acting. But, You're playing a part. You can play older okay. with makeup and not makeup. And- mm, Barbara yeah. Malgetti's was born in 1922. Yes. So she was 60 years old. Oh, my God. She is as old as my brother. Oh, my God. Puts it in perspective. That's weird, isn't it? Let's not forget Kate Reed, who played Lillian Trotter. <sighs> Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. But also, and mm. Judith Light, who played um, Mitch Pelegi's mother. Mitch right. Which, that was still really, that was such an odd choice, the whole thing. Like, I like Judith Light, they, but that was. They should have done. It was, a, it was weird, but I do like her. They should have done something to age her if they were going to, if they were insistent on casting her in this right. role. It's like, it's yeah. like, did anyone see uh, Love and Mercy? about Brian Wilson? No. It had Paul Dano played a young Brian Wilson and they made him look like a young Brian Wilson. Then they bring John Cusick in to play him as an adult. They did nothing to make him look like Brian Wilson. So it was like, took you out of the moment and it was like you were watching another actor playing "Hmm." something else. Just who happened to have the name Brian Wilson. So it really removes you from the moment. If you're going to cast somebody, Use the makeup department and the wardrobe department to age these people appropriately. There are facial prosthetics. There's makeup. There's hair. You can – and the dog and everything. Right. But we suspended disbelief there with Barbara Bill Geddes because I didn't know her age when I started watching the show. Well, no. Also, we were really little, and anyone over twenty is old to someone who's really little. So we had no idea. Right. Actually, anyone older than me is considered old, so I can't be older than me. So I can't be old. Right. 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 Exactly. Exactly. And then we cut to the next scene where Lucy is modeling, and you guys, what the fuck is she wearing? Zorro. She's She's Zorro without the mask. Zorro and like Dracula combined? I don't well Texas soda is what is happening? And 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 the the Annie the photographer has the, the, the wackiest music playing. She definitely I think it's supposed to be cool music. It's not. It's, it's not lame. It's lame. It's lame. Some non royalty, some royalty free music that they got. That's awful. Oh. Um, but Annie, her photographer, is like a character who I like. I would, I want more with Annie because Annie seems really interesting and like would be a really cool character. I want to like follow her a little bit. Correct me if I'm wrong. The, the last um, I don't call it nowadays person of color characters were Tilly. Uh, the guy right. in the yes. barbecue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And I, now I was going to make it very comment. much so like it that. It was very much like, oh my god, we actually have a person of color who has lines, right? And an actual character. And this is before Dora May was the hostess at the Oil Barons Club, and yes. and before Daltrey worked at the um, Justice Department that was investigating the um, spoiler alert B.D. Calhoun affair. Oh, I forgot about Daltrey. Yes, yeah, I did too. But yeah, this this was the first. Yeah, it's this, refreshing. Yes, it is refreshing to see that Dallas, yeah. Texas, is not a lily white community. <laughs> But look, <laughs> but we're on the sixth season, so do, don't you think when they introduced like, what was her name at the Cal Barons? Uh, Dor- Dor- Dorley o- o- Oil Barons. Uh, Dor- Dor- well, oh my God, uh, it, it's almost like. Do you think somebody said something like we've got to do this? We're getting complaints, or because it just they it it kind of all. I think that's you know. We were moving ahead as a society, and Hopefully, we were like, Jesus. "Oh wait, there's people other than white people in, in the world." Maybe we, <laughs> yeah, should, in Texas, maybe we should represent. I don't know. Crazy thought. But it was it was nice to see 
Uh, Pat Colbert joined the show as Dora May and have a reoccurring role alongside the likes of Sly and Phyllis and Kendall and just all of the supporting underlying characters that weave the fabric through the show that you they were they were comfort characters they were comfort characters i and in in retrospect i do wish we had more like leading characters that had mm-hmm. been yeah because it's Texas. and that's where that's where cynthia said seriously went overboard in the new series i don't know if she went overboard. i don't know if she went no, overboard, she went, I think she went overboard she just, in bringing them in, in so many new people in in, in these drug cartels and making them all Latinos and this and that. And the, oh, you're Latino. You must be in the drug cartel, blah, blah. And just going into the stereotypical. Yeah. The, the, the drug cartels were a little right. much for but, me. I felt like we didn't need but to go she, quit that. I, I give her props. the oil business. I give her props for trying to create a more authentic representation of the, that right. part of the right. country, which had a, a, very large Latino population. If you go down there and such, right? Yes, yes. Stand up and represent. Yeah, representation matters. God damn representation it, representation matters. And this is Pride Month too, so you got to represent everybody here too. Bring them all in. Bring everybody yeah. in. Yeah. Screw anybody that does not support equal rights for one and all. Back to Zorro oh. in her oh. Dracula costume. Back to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The Zorro Dracula costume. Um, <laughs> Lucy is modeling for Texas Cola, and I don't get what is happening with the outfit, but all right. Um, and then, yeah, her. Is, is it, are we are we near Halloween school. at all? Is it near Halloween? <laughs> it's November, I think. Yeah, it's November twelfth, so we're past, we're past Halloween. The, the um, d- Day of the Dead. Yeah, even for like if doing advertising it in advance, we're way too they're far just ahead. Um, recycling costumes for the next photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, at least she has a female but, so photographer now, and there's no more. Yeah. yeah, she has a female photographer, which is good. Lucy's a little, she's a little, she's a little stiff, I'd say. Um, and the client n- notices the Johnson, this. The Johnsons. Uh, yeah, Bill Johnson, the client, he he's kind of like, oh, she's not doing great. We need more out of her. Um, so he comes in and he talks to Lucy when she's on a break. And he's just like, hey. I um, thought she was going to get a little uncomfortable ar- around him being a man as he approached her yeah. after the whole Roger thing. That that was my initial thought as he approached her. It's like, she's, she's going to jump she, back she, and, and she, be... She was just kind of like, I know, like, I, I'll do better. This It's my first time back modeling. I'll do better. But then it's interrupted by uh, Mr. Colton, Lucy's divorce divorce lawyer calling, who is John Larroquette, Dan Fielding. <laughs> from so Newport. maybe Dan Fielding is in government witness protection, and he's really Mr. Colton. Oh, and so Night Court is maybe. a spinoff of Dallas on a maybe, different network. Maybe. <laughs> So anyway, he calls her to just set up a meeting, and Lucy's like, oh, "Okay, Thursday at eleven. Thursday at eleven. Bobby's leaving work when Phyllis hands him the evening paper, announcing that Cliff is taking over loose oil because that is more important than anything else going on in the world. Although it's not yeah, a headline; course, it's yes. off to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which it would. Be. <laughs> and he uses it as an opportunity to needle Jr. Yes, he does. You can you can tell the sibling rivalry is in effect is kicking in because of this contest, and it's like, oh yeah, because uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. It's like it's like getting them on the tennis court, and they're like, nope, I'm I'm going to beat you. Or, or when they would go to the racquetball club, where the racquetball where Heidi, club, Hag- where Heidi Hagman played uh, the the yeah. receptionist, and Bobby's like, you like okay, maybe you could beat just me, or maybe you could beat just Cliff, and maybe you could beat just the cartel, but you can't beat all of us coming at you at the same time. And Jared's like, oh yeah, you want to see me do it? Hold my beer. Hold my beer. <laughs> and you notice though, in the these are the early stages of the contest. Jr. is looking. There, there are two different approaches here. Bobby is looking at a legitimate business deal, and Jr. is trying to strong arm and blackmail somebody into getting what he wants. Of course, because this is showing how what kind of businessmen right. they are. Right. <laughs> I still want to know is. what's in that envelope. I still want to know what's in that. Envelope. We'll find out. 
Next um, and then, so basically, JR is just like, yeah, whatever. I can beat you any day, any time, blah, blah, blah. And then Bobby walks out. And as soon as he walks out, JR is like, oh, fuck. Throw, <laughs> he just gets the on the paper. phone and he calls McSween. Right. He wants he wants dirt on, on this, uh, on, on Driscoll's wife now. Now. Can I just comment yeah. on the lighting behind the Texas on the wall there? And, so cool, and the high definition it? is kicking more into effect now. And I, I'm I'm just noticing that it's starting to to pop a little more. Yeah, 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 yeah. This the 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 red behind the Texas map is just is so cool, so eighty. And when we I see the say. living room later in high definition at South Fork, yes, with the curtains yes. and the p the piano. <laughs> A pie, a pie. That's right. So then, yeah, we cut to South Fork, um, and Sue Ellen comes in to talk to the ladies about the cliff situation. I noticed, though, as the car driving up the driveway, it was obviously mm-hmm. someone on the crew because it was a man driving into South Fork, driving the car. <laughs> was it? Once again. <laughs> and then Sue Ellen comes out, and it's like, whoa, Sue Ellen is... Did they even bother to put him in a wig or anything? No, nope. and I think it was a, the man. The, <laughs> the man may or may not have had a hat on as well. Oh my god, you guys, let's do better. So can you? Add, <laughs> They're like, it's fine. This will never be like up to uh, upgraded to HD. Add, add that. It, add that to your we'll goof list, that. and that's why the writers are on strike yeah. now because they they never figured on revenue for streaming services. No. No, because who? No one thought of that back in the day. And then you know, it's business. If they can screw people over, they will. Right. So they it's, will. It's like one of the reasons that Knots Landing does not have more seasons on DVD because the music rights, and they had a lot of music that was current songs that were covered by Lisa Hartman when she was on there. I would have loved to have seen Lisa Hartman and Audrey Landers in a sing-off, but. Uh, those were only picked up for they weren't back then they didn't figure on dvds blu-rays streaming so when you negotiated the music rights for something that was it it was Mm -hmm. that and syndication that was not part of the contract it's why i don't think we'll ever see moonlighting available Mm. and dallas obviously had a generic royalty music that's why it is out there except for one scene in 1987 slash 88 where Johnny they Lee? played Mo- Moni Moni. No, they played Moni Moni by Billy Idol. Oh. And let's not forget Charlene Tilton's ex-husband, Johnny Lee, was on as Bobby was dancing with somebody at a honky tonk doing the Texas two-step. Mm-hmm. And it was looking for love in all the wrong places. But Sue Ellen, yeah, she uh, she is legitimately concerned about the Cliff being back yeah. at the... And she thinks she can do something about it. She's like, maybe I can go talk to Cliff because this is going to, like, explode into something huge that that will not be good. Like, they can all see that this is not going to go well. And how did that work and, for you, Sue Ellen, yeah. when Cliff came to you looking for help before his suicide attempt? Right. No, you... That's Cam's like, don't do that because I feel like he's not going to listen to you yeah. anymore. And then <laughs> Miss Ellie's like, you know what? He's probably not going to. So, Alan, right. sorry. You messed that up. Yeah, I, I did find that a little humorous, though, in <laughs> their exchange. And then Pam thinks that she needs to go above Cliff and talk to her mama. Right. So she- Which they're like, what a good idea. And she's like, I can't think of another way to do it. I, I so- got to do something. I can't sit by passively and just let this happen. All that's going to do is cause problems. Right. So she, she walks over to yet another strategically placed phone where there's probably more cords running all over the South Fork uh, patio from the house. And she dials her mother, who answers on the very first ring. Like she was sitting by the phone, waiting for the phone to ring. I know. <laughs> Maybe she's clairvoyant. Maybe. And she's like, oh, yeah, we should meet. But you can meet me at 227 Antioch Drive. And Pam's like, well, that's really specific. Okay. But she's heard of it. Yeah, she's heard Why of it. Why has she heard of it? Maybe it's a famous road. Maybe she's, Maybe she's seen it in a dream during, this, during her sleep at night. Maybe it's Maybelline. Oh, I also want to mention Pam's hair color. Um, 
Pam's hair is like now a new what? shade. Yeah. Um, it's like a light, a lighter red, like a lighter ginger. And it's, it's a ginger Pam. And it pops more <laughs> in the high definition. That could also be partly it, is that it's just popping more, but I, I like it. I like it's it. Better than the poodle perm. Better anything's better than the poodle perm. Or the hair, Jesus. Or the hair that right? she or the hair that she had in the movie Earthquake. It was a permed afro big uh oh, oh yeah. Um <laughs> I did not see that. Oh yeah. I'm gonna giggle that. I I I'm I'm Googling it and posting it right now. Oh, so, yeah. The only I think the only Victoria Principal movie that I've seen uh, other than like a Dallas thing was um she was in right after Dallas she was in a TV movie called Mistress and I taped it and uh I had that on tape for a long time and she had some uh, like amazing 80s bang and she was also in a show that. called Titans in the early 2000s Yeah, I never Yeah, and I think I watched like one oh. episode of that and then it was like canceled. Yeah, the and only other the person that stood out to me was uh Kevin Zegers who played in Air Bud. He played the kid. It seemed like it was trying to be yes. Dallas, kind of. And I, I, I also have the um, Victoria, I'm not ashamed to admit, the Victoria Principal edition of Playboy where she was on the cover. Somebody gave it to me. Dude. They knew I was a Dallas fan, oh, so they gave it to me. One. How many people from Dallas were actually on Playboy? Oh. That would be a good like question. Like I know, obviously, that would be Pam, but because Pam's got some tiggle bitties. Bobby leaves work, um, and he runs in the Canadians who – are like they really need tells an Phyllis he's going to the Cattlemen's Club, and we get to actually see the lobby of the Ewing Oil Building. Yeah, is this the first time? I don't know uh, because well, they did move, they did redo the offices, so I don't know if they're in the same building or not or anything. But um, mm. but we do start to see more of the building than just the office area right yeah yeah high five to them on that finally yep. so we're getting a lot we're getting new new sets so obviously they're spending the money we got yeah. the, the the barnes wentworth and the gold building we have the the, the lobby here we have the yep. redone living room of south pork lots of setups and speaking of new places pam pulls into rebecca's new house which has a for sale sign um, by Mills Realty. And did we also mention that the McLeish brothers, Bobby needs more time, but he, they have someone else that they're going to talk to in the meantime. Right. They, they're like, hey, TikTok, time's running, we need an answer, and you're not the only person we're talking to, so. You're not the only no, game not. in town, boy. Right, right. Like, we want to do business with you, you're number one, but mm, we will go with someone else. We will go with your understudy. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of trees lining Antioch Drive. We found out Rebecca just bought the house. Well, that was very fast. Very fast. And she gives Pam a little tour. And it'll be a great place for Cliff to entertain, won't it? If you... Great, yeah. And then look at the pool. Maybe Christopher will swim here one day. Maybe, Rebecca. Maybe. But we should probably put some fencing around just to protect Christopher in case he comes over. Because things happen. And tragic Right. Tragedies right. have happened in pools with young children, and it's it would be a shame if something happened, and that ended up on the front page of the next paper. But Pam, she's like, look, the reason I actually came to see you is because I really want to convince you to stop this whole like pushing Cliff to get into a uh, tangle with Jr. Like, it's not going to go well for me or my family. Like, it's going to all blow up, and it's going to be bad. Can you just can not? anyone just say, Rebecca? Do you see what happened the last time Jr. and Cliff tangled? Hello. Right. Right. Yeah. Fool me once, shame on you. And Fool me twice. Fool me can't get fooled again. And she's like, well, I'm basically, I'm helping Cliff because I wasn't able to help him when he was growing up. And, you know, and she's like, well, you, Pam calls her out. Yeah, she's she, like, she takes some, yeah, she takes some digs at mama. She's like, you left us. You, you've you never had a trouble being strong for yourself. You left us to make a new life. And, you know, She was barely whatever. 17. And she couldn't read or write. And she had to pull herself up by the blah, blah, blah. She's like 17. Okay. Was she 17 when she left? Or was she 17 when she had Cliff? I, say, I have a question. Me too. Because I think. 
And if, you can't, if, read, her, you can't she, read her right at 17? She was 17 when she left, and there was some little statutory rape going on there. Because Well, back then, they didn't have that. Yeah, I don't think they had laws back then. I think my like, grandmother was 15 when she got married. Ooh. My great-grandmother was 13. And that's normal, though. But was she that young when she had... Because she would have been, like, 13, 14 when she had Cliff. If she left when she was 17. Uh-huh. That's gross. I want to know now. Mm-hmm. And yeah. FYI, if y'all haven't watched the new it's on Discovery Plus, that Natalia, whatever, it's about that orphan that got adopted. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. on the third episode. I watched. I just watched it. Oh, it's no, fucking I watched crazy. All of it. Sorry, it go crazy. ahead. And it's crazy. No, I, I just want to say as a, really as a person who, <laughs> who grew up at, in um, a foster home, basically because my parents were foster parents. They are my natural parents, but they took in foster children. I've lived with a lot of really traumatized children. That is a kid that is traumatized. That's what I'm saying. Kid. You don't even like, it's almost like she's got a childlike mind because no one just tells their neighbor, well, you know, I, I, I mean, I pulled a knife. Like, it's like she didn't think that it was a, I mean, I think she knew it was bad, but she didn't think it was bad to tell somebody why she was in trouble. You know what I mean? Like a child would do that. And, That's why it's kind of like everybody's so confused. Yeah. You have more episodes to go, so I'm not. Oh, yeah, I'm only on the third episode. But... Oh fuck yeah, I'm watching the rest yeah. of it tonight. Hell yeah! And, and if you want to add something, on uh, June fifteenth, uh, season six of Black Mirror debuts on Netflix. Ooh! Also, the new season of Outlander starting soon too. So I got to resubscribe to Stars. Oh, but we're back trying to figure out Rebecca's yes. Yes. age. That, that... If she was. It, so I'm taking it as what she's saying sounds like she left Digger. At 17. A mother, at 17, a mother of two kids who had a child, Tyler. And Catherine and with a Catherine, C. Who died before them. What? At so 17. I get around. Bop, 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 bop. I'm just kidding. She had a, but still, Boy, that's I, a lot. That just makes, that, that makes her story a lot sadder to me. Rebecca's yeah, how story. old was her father, baby daddy? Yeah, w- yeah, right. How old I mean, was she thirteen, and he was some twenty-two-year-old drunk that came in and was like, "I'll take you out of this one-horse town." Yeah. Uh, today, mm-hmm. I believe today probably. that's called statutory yeah. rape, Willard. Right, but I mean, in the, in the old days, I think. Right. right. In the thirties <sighs> oh. or whatever, that was like the way it was. Forties, that was the way it was. So anyway, so Pam says this is going to destroy them all, and basically Rebecca's like. I don't, I have to do it, but I, I she have has to, to give I Cliff can't. the strength that he hasn't had. The she, P- Pam has all the Ewings behind her and all this stuff. And, but, yeah. and Cliff doesn't have anything. Well, Cliff had a bottle of pills and some alcohol, unfortunately. And that's, that's not a fair fight. And I can see where she's coming from, but she really should be trying to steer him to another profession most definitely, We're, but she she's using this as a way to. She really thinks J- Cliff can beat Jr. and she wants it to happen. She wants him to get like this revenge, and it's. I don't think she can see far enough to be like this could turn out really bad. Mm. You never know who can get hurt in the process. So we cut to Ellie the and Frank, the and they've floor, had the a bodies hit. very nice lunch. It was, and we learned that Frank's wife passed. Two weeks shy of their 40th anniversary. Is that called a ruby? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. I didn't know that. The yet. ruby yeah. anniversary? That's 40 years, mm, I yeah. guess. 40. Yeah, well, see, so. we'll learn something every day. Mm. But it, it, it did go uh, very well because he wants to be a support system for her. As a right, because he knows what it's like to be a widower. He's been a widower for three years. And, and it, it's the first no, time I don't see him as a <laughs> dirty, sleazy used car salesman. Right. He's yeah, he's basically like, I'm here for you. Like if you need a friend, if you need someone to lean on, like I I'm I'm lean just here, on man. Me when you're not yeah. strong. And she's just like, Oh, that's nice. Okay. And cue up James you Taylor. It. You've got a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and then the Canadians now we find out who else they're talking to, and they're talking to Cliff. Right. And he wants to have a little bit of time to do some checking before he jumps 
his well, own research, right? right? He's like, I've been burned before. I need to check this out on my own. Yeah, we're thinking like Wally Hampton because he did his own research with Wally Hampton yeah. and found out, yeah. wait, Wally and JR, they knew each other. Oh. Weird, yeah. That didn't stop him from the Wellington land deal, which – True. And then we quick scene where we find out that Harry has found out that Mrs. Driscoll, who he's been tailing, gets her hair done every other day. She doesn't do much else in her life, but she gets her hair done every other day. What the hell happens to that woman's hair in 48 hours that she needs to have it done again every 48 hours? I'm guessing she doesn't wash it on her own. She just has them professionally do it. So maybe it's more of a social thing for her because she he's out working. And she's a rich bitch, and she can afford to get someone to just do her hair for her every other day. You're a rich girl, and you've gone too far because you know it don't yeah. matter anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he and then he calls Walt to invite him and his wife to dinner with him and Sue Ellen. Yeah. Yep. He's like, he's he wants to apologize for like going too far. And Walt's like, oh, that's no big deal. He's like, no, no, no. I, I want to. So well, then I take you out. It's been too long. Like, let us do. He's like, oh, okay, sure. But let's meet at my house for drinks beforehand. Okay. Can we talk about idea. how weird Walt's house looks? The red couch and the. the, the, the There's some choices. Some, yeah. I think. What is the style? I think there? Walt is going through a midlife crisis. This is my theory. Walt is going through a midlife crisis. He has a wife who's like half his age. He let her redesign design their house it's very much i don't think you watch mad men but it's very much a don draper getting married the second time and having the yeah. white car winning and it's like and and ben ben pizza as i call him instead of piazza is uh, also splitting his time on saint elsewhere playing dr josiah bartlett so he's not around really that much and his wife has to do something to occupy her time the house and the hairdresser i guess yeah yeah, how's my hair done? It's quite a double life. Office of Land yeah, Management yeah. and a doctor. Oh. So we cut to South Fork, um, and Pam tells Bobby how bad it went with her mom. Right, and there is ice, according to Teresa, in the in the bar. And this is where we see the yeah. South Fork living room. It just kind of pops in the high definition with the new the the uh-huh. greens and the 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 whites and the mm-hmm. off whites and the and the the drapes we now see windows behind the couch to the outside yeah. Yeah. where they're draped and yeah Definition. you're going to notice at the end and a piano too in there and jock's portrait yeah, yeah. but you're, you, portrait. you pay attention in the last episode of the season where the you can tell it's done on a soundstage because the wall shakes like this it's a very dark shadows yeah. moment yes yeah. Let's hold that over. boot mic up. <laughs> uh, but basically, in the scene, Bobby and Pam are talking about, you know, she's worried about her, the thing with her mom and that he'll, it'll ruin her relationship with her family. And then Bobby's telling her that he doesn't really know what to do about the Canadians. And they're like, well, at least we have each other. Oh. And it's this is a really nice little moment of them getting along and having you a better moment. enjoy it because I have a feeling this whole fight is going to. Let's hang on to that. Yeah, cling on yeah. to these moments while you can, because this yeah. is Dallas, these are the yep. Ewings, and stuff happens. I feel like that's a bad omen. Oh, look, we have to have each other. Whoever's happy today is not necessarily happy tomorrow. Yeah. Um. So then the next day, Ray brings Mickey around to finally meet the Ewings while they're having... Did you, did you notice um, how yeah. he pulled the truck pulls up the South Fork Drive as Lucy is pulling out the South Fork Drive. Oh, and if you I notice, did. for people that have been to South Fork in recent years, and I would like to send props out to South Fork for their heavily increased presence on social media and the events going on down there and the trade days and, and the chili contest. And just, it, it's really starting to come alive down there again, thankfully under the new owners. Yeah. And you can see that the trees lining the drive are not that tall. So they're still young compared to what they are now. And when you look to the left yeah. side, you don't see the, function hall and a lot of those other buildings that yeah. it's still open land right. over there and this is what 1980 
82 going 80, two. almost 1983 so mm-hmm. almost 83 right Woo-hoo. so ray introduces vicky to everybody and jr takes the opportunity to, as usual to just kind of be a dick Right, and he'll sleep better knowing that he's a trotter, not a crabs, and a, 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 a blood, <laughs> blood kin, and all this. <laughs> all right, Jr. I'm like none of that's needed, but okay, and cool. Don- cool Donna cool, does not seem amused to be have Mickey in the, up in the big house. No, Donna doesn't like any. She doesn't of it. even have any dialogue in the scene. She's just there, like. Si- She's just got some she, looks. She's just got some like really yeah, judgy some facial looks. expressions that you can't like. She's doing, she's doing the Barbara Bell Getty silently emoting, but nobody silently emotes like Babs. And then we cut to Dan Fielding <laughs> is worried about Mitch um, wanting a settlement from Lucy. He's like, you know, FYI, you just inherited like $5 million and you're just getting divorced. There's a chance that your ex-husband is going to want a piece of that. Lucy's like, oh shit, you're right. I didn't even think of that. I don't think that he'll be into it. But then a lot of things have surprised me lately. So we better, we Dan better make Dan Fielding sure. doing his homework. This is why Judge That's Harry Stone right. wants him in his night court. That's right. Yes. Also, does it look to you like he's wearing lipstick in this scene? It might be the high definition. Um, it might be the high other- definition because, like, Lucy has some like nice, like very like luscious lips going on, and then it looks like they put maybe just a shade too dark. There are other people that I think are wearing lipstick that are not because of the high definition. Right, because they didn't expect it to. Look right, up. they didn't expect this to be seen again all these years. They didn't. They didn't expect no. for three, four weirdos to be sitting on their computers talking about TV shows 40, 41 Very years true. later. True yeah. words, yeah. Okay, then we got to the Cattlemen's Club. This is Cliff's first meeting with the cartel. He doesn't want them doing business with the Ewing Oil during this contest. Surprise, surprise. Because he's convinced that JR, the underhanded one, is going to beat the good Saint Bobby in this contest. Yeah, and they're all like... Jer's obviously going to be Bobby, and everyone's like, mm, "Yeah, you have a you have a and, point there." And any He's deal that they to. make with Young Oil is going to just end up pocketing, lining Jr's pockets a year from now. So, pockets, right. so let's just yeah. cut them off right then and there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's a good thing they cut that conversation off because who did they run into as they're leaving? Jr and Sue Ellen. Dun, dun, dun. Swellen, swellen, swellen. Yeah. And she's wearing uh, red. Oh, yep, the- and then Bobby calls the Canadians to set up a meeting for lunch tomorrow. I like the uh, Cl- Cliff and Jr. do exchange a few barbs. The, you can't, yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, Sue Ellen wanted to spend the afternoon with Jr., but he has something going on and will spend the evening with her. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. You were on to Bobby. Yeah. Setting up his meeting with the Canadians. He's he, he's supposed to have lunch with Pam. So, but they're like, well, why don't you just bring her with? And he's like, all right, cool. We'll now, do that. Is it just me or does the office that the McLeish brothers in, uh, are sitting in look like a bad 80s, early 80s science fiction movie office in the background? I didn't notice that. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and look. It looks really like, like the laboratory in like – Hawkins in Stranger Things, and, and I'm just <laughs> sitting there going, "That's funny." It just had this like very cheap early '80s movie set feel to it. So then uh, we cut to Mrs. Driscoll leaving the salon, which looks almost like she was leaving a Chinese restaurant in a way. <laughs> she probably really was. <laughs> right, just the the architecture looked like uh, some Chinese right. restaurant that she was leaving. Yeah. And she just promptly hits a guy. Right. Who the friend claims that the guy is drunk and she gives him money. She gives him money. Yeah. She's like, well, maybe we should just take him to die. And he's like, oh, no, no, he's drunk. We'll, we'll just leave. And she's like, well, here, how about here's some money. Take some money. This is this right. is what the rich do to solve a problem. They just right. throw money at it. Yes. It'll make me feel better. And they're like, oh, right. okay. Good idea. It's like walking into one of those. Uh, chambers where they turn on the air and the money blows around and you get to grab it as much as yeah. you can in a yeah, minute. Yeah. And sh- I, I would personally cover my hands with honey before I went in there or some <laughs> in- sticky substance to catch all the money. <laughs> That's just me. I'm cheating. I know. Yeah. And JR is JR and Harry are watching from a distance. Yes, from the sidelines. Because they're all. I they're, just they're, saw a hit and run. They're all hired actors on. Yeah, obviously. 
they're on the take. Yeah. And then Dave Culver has come all the way to see Donna and get signed copies of her book. He flew all that way to have her sign six books for his staff? Yeah, but also to convince her to go to this, like, political party thing. Um, On November 23rd, by the way. Right. Which we in Dallas world know 2012 was the – November 23rd was the day that Larry Hagman passed. Yeah, that's true. And the anniversary of Doctor Who premiering. But November 23rd, 1982, it's exactly – 30 years to the day before Larry Hagman passed. Oh, yeah, that's true. Wow. Yeah. Da, da, da. But this this uh, political thing is a, basically a who's who of local politics, and he knows that they're going to really want to get to talk to her because of how, like, political, political, politically savvy she is. And, like, she's going to make a splash. And But, but no autographs. She's just like you can you can feel like she wants to, but then she can feel Ray behind her getting all like, oh my god, she's getting attention, Mar. And she's like, well, I'll only go if Ray goes with. And Ray's like, you know, I don't like those things. And she's like, no, but I really like you to go with me because you know that if she doesn't go, he's just gonna she's gonna come back. He's gonna be drunk and calling himself a dumb yeah. cowboy. <laughs> that always happens when she gets attention. <laughs> and and he's probably gonna find another. Bonnie Bimbet to have in his in his stable. Probably he'll be fucking somebody else, just right. you know, because he feels bad about himself and he's a dumb cowboy. Lindsay so Bloom, like, where are you? No. <laughs> she's like, will you come with? And he finally is like, okay, I'll go with. And so then she agrees to go, but no autographs. But no autographs. I'm a dumb cowboy. It's a dumb cowboy. That's right. Okay, <laughs> this. This is where it gets very interesting, and Cliff is going uh, finding out reports on the McLeish brothers and the, their above board. Yeah, and Bobby and his geologist, mm-hmm. and Pam is biding time. And I have a feeling that if Cliff finds out that Bobby is the one that got the deal, and that Pam, there's going to be a little un. Uh, right. Things are gonna. <sighs> yeah, it's gonna be I, some I, not goodness there. Yeah, I don't, I don't like where that's going. I, mm-hmm, I just mm-hmm. for Pam, because... who's really trying not to be involved in all this and worried about it, like she's unwittingly getting right in the middle of it. Right, and I, I knowing Cliff the way I know him, he will accuse her of going behind his back to <laughs> help steal a deal, and yeah. she. Did, nobody had any clue that he was right. meeting with these people. Nobody knows. Yeah. But that doesn't matter to Cliff because it's yeah. all about him. Right, 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 right. Because he's just a barnacle. And then JR sending flowers? To the Driscolls? Why? Right. Just- and going over the dinner arrangement? Why did he send yeah. flowers to the Driscolls? So I guess I missed. I didn't quite get it. I, was, I don't know. And Bobby is in on the deal. <laughs> Yeah, Bobby's finally like, yep, he shows up and he's like, I'm good to go. Let's just do it. And then we end on a vintage JR scheme. Very vintage JR scheme. JR's at the Driscoll's. Sue Ellen's running late. She's just going to meet him at the restaurant. And JR's like, oh, let's just give it another minute here. Let's not rush. Here at, at, at the Draper compound. <laughs> right. Uh, let's, um, let's. And then, weirdly, all of a sudden, the the doorbell rings. Oh, who could that be? Oh, my God, it's Sergeant McSween, who's there to take in uh, Mrs. Driscoll for doing a hit and run that just came across his desk. Harry, th- th- there's there's got to be something that Jr. can do to help out the situation. I mean, he he must ha- he looks like he has a history with Harry. Right, and Jr.'s like, well, you know, you guys, I could. I could help, but that'd really be me going out on a limb for you. Like I could try to talk him down and not file a report. And and the words Jr. wants to hear. Oh, I'm gonna owe you one. I'm gonna owe you one. From Driscoll. Those are the like, words that Jr. will never let the nope. person live down. Right. Jr.'s like, well, I'll do what I can. I I'll, I'll see what I can do. And I then, I own you is what 
is basically what happens. Right. I also I want to bring up a thing that I is becoming it's becoming a thing on Dallas when I feel like an actor gets a moment that they're just a guest actor or where they get to play a scene and they're like, oh my God, this is my Dallas Oscar moment. Uh, are we talking about Carol? We are talking about <laughs> Carol. And her, 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 her daytime soap opera scream? Yes. She is just like, oh my God. And she's just like, her. this is her Dallas Oscar moment where she's just acting her little heart out. Oh my God. Oh, give her an award. I All I could think of whenever the camera was on her was this is a we're cutting in between Dallas and the daytime soap opera actress. <laughs> yes. Yes. She is. This is her, uh, her D, uh, DOM Dallas Oscar moment. And let's not forget Larry Hagman, uh, was on the edge of night back in the sixties. as oh, Ed Gibson. A lot of people were on that show. Yeah. So Jr. out of the kindness of his heart helps them just because he's such a kind yeah. soul. Well, what are friends for? And then he laughs as it freeze frames, and, and uh, because scene. of Jr. We drink once and scene and scene and scene. And scene. I'm going to get this one. Four point five bourbons. I think this is a pretty good episode. We're starting to lead up to some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and a, a vampire cape and zero outfit. <laughs> My fan is horrible, so I'm going to hurry. Um, I'm going to give it a 4.0 because I didn't really watch it that well. Um, so, But I do think you're right about leading up to other stuff because there's certain things I remembered when y'all were talking about that I may have missed that I forgot. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so 4.0 for that and probably um, Donna signing six, six books for no reason. There you go. I will go with a 4.5. And I am going to go with the introduction of the gold office buildings. Nice. That's a good one. Yes. Yes. Um, Cool. So next time we're going to be talking about episode season six, episode eight, 111 of the series, the Ewing touch. Who's touching you? You have to stay tuned and find out. We'll have to find out. Also, I want to bring up, we got an email. Uh-oh. Good or bad. This is trouble. Well, it's a she funny well. story <laughs> from our listener um, and a Patreon supporter, Brad Mahone, who um, said that he recently went to South Fork and was on the tour where the tour guide was just saying a bunch of nonsense on the tour. Really? Um, okay. So I'm going to read you the email. Okay, so we're on the tour at the old Duncan Acres Ranch this morning, and this tour guide out and out lied to a whole bunch of people. I don't even know where to start. She said that Jim Davis was filming a scene when he went to sit down and basically fell over in a cardiac arrest, died later at a hospital. Larry Hagman went to South Fork to film a scene but couldn't get through it and went to the hospital where he died two days later. Victoria Principal was fired from the show because she and Linda Gray didn't get along and said the War of the Ewings was in 1994, J.R. returns in 1996, and Return to South Fork was in 1998. Then later she was talking to a couple privately and those and said those three movies were actually documentaries and they'd explain the history of the ranch and Ewing families. I'm laughing so fucking hard remembering all this. My jaw was almost on the floor. There was more. I'm struggling to remember. I spoke to her privately and asked if she knew what might have happened to Jim Davis's portrait after Larry passed. And she was so certain in her telling of this. She claims that my sold his stuff in a private auction online and that Dave, the Davis portrait was being bid on by the owners of South Fork, some Indian gentlemen and an agent for the queen of England and the queen got it. So it might be hanging at Belmoral right now. <laughs> what a fucking guess. And the four people who believed all that, LOL. I want to stand up and tell some facts, but she was a bit scary, so I just left it alone. Um, Did he get her name? He said, oh, yeah, and the owner between Duncan and, I don't know, it's Megan or Rex Mon? Mon? Rex Mon? Yeah. Yeah. And Mon, Duncan and Mon, I forget the name. He went bankrupt in 1990, and that's why the show ended. <laughs> what? What the fuck? 
He said he now wants to just move there and be a tour guide. I mean, so uh, I thought that was a funny story. It's like someone they just didn't. Know. They're just like I'm just gonna make up a bunch of stuff. It's fine. I know. Um, if Brad is out there, if he can remember the name of this tour guide, yeah. We should find out the name what because what because I I, mean, I know really other cool. tour guides there and I would like to pass this along to people I know so they can yeah. take this person aside privately and clear some of this up. Yeah, yeah. If you're in Dallas uh, and you go up to South Fork, go up around the uh, if you're facing the ranch, go around way down to the right and take a road down and up in the back and off to the side is the South Fork trailer park. Oh, right. All yeah, the, yeah. There's a replica of South Fork and a <laughs> swimming pool. And there are all these streets and little subdivisions all over the property. And all the streets are named That's after cool. Dallas characters. So thanks for joining us. Um, you should check, if you haven't yet, check out our website, ewingbbq.com. You'll find all of our things there. You'll find all of our episodes, our past episodes. Merchandise. Um, our merchandise, our, um, a, a little bit about us is on there. And uh, some other just and, info, like, stuff. So. And this goes out to, is it a uh, Kristen Tuttle uh, uh, who messages us on Instagram, I believe her name is, uh, was asking where to find the, she called it the Kathy and Cherie episode, but let's not shortchange oh. Michael Priest, right. who Michael was also was well. a big bad. part of that episode. That is going to be in there, and I will probably, we can post up a link, and you just go in and look up any of the previous yeah, episodes. It, it'll be, I mean, that's on, if you just look up wherever you get our podcast, it should also, it should be on there. Um, if you'd like to see a, a video version website, of it. Though. Go to our huh? website. Go to our website, yeah. though. Go to our website. Yeah. Go to our website. If nothing else, it's, it's on our website. And if you'd like to see a video version of it, it's on our Patreon. So, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time. Until then, bye. Bye, y'all. Y'all come back now, you hear? Next on Dallas. If JR takes one step out of line, I guarantee you we'll destroy him. Other people have fought the Ewings before, and they've regretted it. So that stupid grudge you're carrying is going to cost you what little family you have. Me and Mama will be together. I won't be the one to lose the family. You will. I've invited Frank Crutcher to join us. I want you all to get to know Frank. When's the last time you saw Mama laugh like that? Not since before Daddy died.